Shouts and Gianna Palminteri are here for dinner tonight. Friends of uh, Italy, friends of mine, and you're like also very well famous and very well regarded in the Italian American community. How did you guys know each how, other? Like how you, how, how did, you, we, how how did, did we you meet? Yeah. How did we meet? Well, we met uh, actually, you know, Italian Americans were both Catholic. We met uh, coming out of church. She was walking out, I was walking out, and we saw each other. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't talk, no. we just saw each other. And we made some kind of eye contact. And, yes. But I, I didn't want to say, you know, what am I going to, you know, it was coming out of church, I felt funny. And, but I knew the next day, I knew when I went home, I said, gee, I should have said something to her. But then I said, well, you know, next Sunday, I'll just go to the same mass again, <laughs> and maybe she'll be there. But. Before Sunday came, that Wednesday, my friend invited me to a nightclub. I went to the club, I went, I opened the door, and I walked right into her. She was coming out, I was walking yes. in. And I said, did I see you Sunday? She goes, yeah, I saw you Sunday. But I, but he didn't look like that, and I didn't look like this. We were yeah. dressed up very club-like. And uh, we got married one year later, right before Bronx Tale. We were just, you know, he was a, a well-known actor, and I was a, a, an up-and-coming actress. And we had the best year. It was just we acted, we were, had a great time, we were in love, we were engaged. It was a lot of fun. It was a great year. The first year. years were a lot of fun. There was not <laughs> a lot of pressure, a lot of work, a lot of play, a yeah. lot of yeah. passion, and yeah. a lot of food. We ate a lot, we cooked a lot. When I cooked for him, he, yeah. he decided he was going to marry me then. Yes. Wow, yeah, that's always a catch. Yeah, he gave me this little book that said uh, 101 ways, cento and uno ways to make pasta. And I looked at him, I was like, well, this is an American book. I was like, I'm not going to need this. So I think you were excited. Yeah, I was like, wow. I said, she really knows how to make sauce. Yeah. And she really yeah, so knows like, how to do it. So I took the book and I was like, get out. And she was a great cook. And she still is. I have a question for you both. As actors, yeah. what's a role that you would never, ever, ever play? And what's the role that you would love to play? I would never, ever play someone who tortures children, a kidnapper of a child. I couldn't play it. Because I, I was watching a show the other day where a mother went ballistic and I said, I just couldn't do that. Although, as an actress, you would want to push yourself, but it would not give me pleasure to go to work. And the role I'd love to play is the first lady. Okay. <laughs> I would love to play the first yeah. lady. You would like to play the any first lady? Any first lady. She's a political junkie. Any first lady. Which I'm going to go next. <laughs> yeah. I love, I love our first lady now and I love all our first ladies, but I would love to play a first lady of our country. How about you, Charles? Well, it, you know, it's funny, but since we always talked about it. Uh, I, usually I could do anything, I could play anything, because it's important for me as an actor, it's not as important for me as if they like me. If you don't, you don't have to like me as the character, but as long as you understand me, I'm okay with it. And the role I always wanted to play is a priest. A priest, a okay. Priest. I want to play a, a priest, yes, a Catholic priest. And I just haven't found, I haven't written one. Yeah. I should write something for myself with that, but I do want to play a priest, yes. There is definitely one in there, though. Yeah. There's, a, there's a script in there. Yeah. Well, let's talk about inspiration. I saw that you have a blog, a Hollywood mom. Yes. So tell me a little bit about more how the idea came about. Well, the, the idea came about because I became a mother. I was an actress in very Hollywood. Became a mother, and I became very consumed with motherhood. And I sort of left my old life behind, but I missed it. So I was with my Hollywood moms, friends who were Hollywood, and we had the same problems that we had, you know, the other mothers had. And I thought, mothers are so isolated, we have, we have so much pressure, this is a great forum to talk about everything from A to Z, glamour and how to raise your children. And for you, that you're like a writer as well. What inspiration? Like how do you get your inspiration to write the stories that you write? Well, the inspiration comes as I get it in my head and I start thinking about it. Like I thought about Eubin. I thought about a hedge fund guy and a spiritual guy meeting and how different they would be. I, I keep mulling it around in my head. And then I keep thinking of the, then I think of the dialogue. Then I think of the things they would argue about. And then when it gets so much, I bust out, I gotta start writing. And also, you, you were saying that you actually just finished the music, working on the music for I'm working uh, on the musical Bronx, for Tale, Bronx the musical, Tale. which is a great yes, idea. Yes, I've always visioned Bronx Tale as a musical. It was a one-man show, it was a movie, but I always felt it was guys and dolls and a West Side Story smashed together, you know? And Robert De Niro is directing it, and the great record producer Tommy Mottola is producing it. Awesome. 
So uh, amazing, we're getting the, we're getting the greatest musical writers. I wrote the book and the lyrics. So we're the very, lyrics too. Yes. Wow. Yes. So we're very excited by that. And uh, are you going to be in it? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> if you had to choose, what do you prefer is like theater mm -hmm. as an actor or film? So. Well, you know, I, I, I get asked that question a lot. You know, would you rather do theater? I love doing theater. When I was on Broadway, I, I went in, I had dinner with, the, with so everybody, nice. with the kids, and, and then I, the driver would pick me up, take me downtown. I'd be there like 6.37, you know, get ready, get makeup on, go on at 8 o'clock. I'm finished at, nine, I was finished, go on at 8, I was finished at 9.30. 10 no, 10.30. No, no. 10? 9.30. Yeah, better. Yes. So it was 90 minutes anyway, long, the one-man show. 8 o'clock, 9.30, finished, That's take great. the makeup off, home by 10.30, watching the news. It was great. I think as an actor, there are two rushes you have. Well, actually, three. The first rush is to walk down the Broadway street and see your name. Mm -hmm. Like he had his whole big name on the marquee. And you're walking down Broadway and you're seeing all the fans and all the lights and you're just sitting there at night. Broadway, a Broadway pretty amazing. Special. That's like an outer body experience. Yes. The second rush for an actor is to walk on a, a set of a studio. You know when you go in L.A. and the gates open and they say your name and you go straight to this big lot and the lights and the cameras and you walk in and there's your chair. Yeah, but that kind of wears off. Yeah, the but there's always a rush. The theater doesn't, though. <laughs> I wear well, I'm used to it. So That's the just answer. a rush. The third rush is when you, you know, the first time you see your movie on screen and the music and the, right. and the credits come on. As a writer-director, yes. Yeah, to that, see it up there is really That is like, you just cry. Exciting. It's just like, because all that hard work for years, and there it is. You just freak out. It's, it's a little quiet freak out, but it's yeah. amazing. It's very amazing. On that freak out, let's celebrate to you yes. guys. Oh, thank you. Salute. 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 Salute.